If you want to learn how to make an AI bot connecting high level with ChatGPT in less than 30 minutes without breaking the bank, this video is for you. How's it going? My name is Matt Decino, and I run a company called HL Pro Tools. We exist to make high level easy. That could be tools, these tips, these tricks, supporting agency owners. We actually provide branded support directly to your users. So if you need a team behind you, making it easy to grow and scale and launch, that's why we're here. This idea was inspired by a couple years ago, we'd built out a uh, connection for Dialogflow. This is Google's AI and high level. And um, with the popularity and the rise of OpenAI and ChatGPT, I thought, you know, I think we could do something similar to this. And so that's what I started with. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you what I've got here. And then I'm going to show you how you could build it yourself if you're interested. And so uh, what I've done is taken it and connected ChatGPT or OpenAI's uh, models to text messages. And the cool thing is, the popularity and the rise of ChatGPT has all been based around accessibility. Now you can interact with an AI via chat that just felt so easy and made it more accessible. And so that increases the learning curve, the iteration, the ability, the inputs for the machine to learn, and therefore it increases the sophistication and uh, you know the intelligence of the model. And so this is kind of like taking that one step further. What's easier, well, you know, you know, the chat interface, pretty easy, but you gotta log in, you gotta click all the pictures of the bridges or whatever it might be. Now you can just have it in your phone, in your pocket, and anytime you want prompting for whatever it is to make work easier, you can use uh, use this kind of uh, an integration here. And the, the cool thing beyond just like, you know, kind of encyclopedia asking it questions or prompting it to write sarcastic tweets, I um, was surprised with how well it handles general conversation. So we've actually uh, overhauled completely what we're doing from a conversational AI booking side. Um, but look at this, even if I just send in something like a, hey, this is an unprompted whatever, you know, it could be like, I need help or I wanna book an appointment, whatever it is, it actually, handles those kind of conversations a lot better than out of the box tools like uh, like even Amazon's or Google's AI. So it's, it's really interesting and I think it's gonna continue to innovate and change how we build with AI and the kind of models that we're gonna be using. And so um, that all is you know fun and dandy, but I'm gonna actually share my screen and show you what it takes to, to build this out. And so the first thing, is OpenAI. You do need an account with OpenAI. This is the the machine, the company behind ChatGPT and all of their uh, you know all their models. And uh, so you're going to need OpenAI. If you don't have an account, they might have a wait list. You know, so it, I, if you haven't seen the buzz about this, I would encourage you to go there, sign up for an account. Um, and uh, even if you have to wait, it's totally worth it because we're going to pull some API keys out of here. I'll show you how to do that. Um, then it comes down to we are running on one Zap, uh, one custom field and uh, one workflow, and I'll show you how to build this all out. But so on the Zapier side, which is what I'm gonna start with, if you're afraid about the cost here, let me tell you, it is way cheaper than hiring a developer. I'll also say, if you are already a member of HL Pro Tools, I have a power training in there which shows you how we run millions of Zaps per year for less than 20, you know, like less than 30 bucks per month. So if you're curious about that, check out HL Pro Tools, um, could be helpful and worth your time. But even if you're just using the regular price of Zapier, I think it's still worth it. And so the um, three pieces to our Zap, step one is gonna be this webhook. And so the catch webhook, meaning this allows us to send information outside of high level into really ultimately into OpenAI, but into Zapier for the first step and just to catch that. So we're gonna, you know, if I, I wanna catch webhook and it's gonna prompt and show me, um, it's gonna show me this webhook, which then I'm gonna go and use inside of high level. So we, step one, I've got the Zapier on here. We'll, we'll kind of bounce back and forth because that's how I build it is in, in these pieces. So I've got the webhook and before I continue, I'm gonna wanna run a test to that. And so the two things we're gonna build out in the high level side, one is this custom field. So if you go to custom fields, we're gonna hit add field. I'm gonna go multi-line. And what I'm gonna call this is response. That's it. And so this is gonna log every response from OpenAI, and this is how we're gonna be able to pass messages back and forth via SMS. You can have this conversation via text. And so, so we're gonna call this response. I already have it made, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna save it, but you would save it, and then you'll have that custom field. Then you're gonna go into a workflow. You're gonna see there's two triggers we're using, and then kind of like an if else, so we can run this all in one workflow, so we don't have to have multiple workflows happen in there. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do actually is um, 
well, we could go multiple ways with this. The first thing I'm gonna do is create both of these triggers. The first one is contact changed, and I'm gonna add a filter. I'm gonna show you what this process would be. I'm gonna add filter. Also, you're selecting it, you're gonna choose contact changed. The filter, I'm gonna filter by that response, which is just a custom field. And I'm gonna say it has changed. So what's happening here is every time that custom field changes, the response field changes, it's gonna add them into this workflow. So we'll save that trigger. The second trigger is I'm gonna say customer replied. You could make this filter more strict if you wanted. Um, for my testing purposes, all I said was that customer replied and the reply channel is SMS. So if I show you what that looks like again, so by default customer replied looks like this, we're gonna add a filter. We're gonna say, um, I just like to search too, so reply channel, and we're gonna say it's the SMS. I could run this over many other channels. You could go, you could say they have a tag, they don't have a tag, they're in a pipeline, they're not in a pipeline. You could, you could add a lot more filters here into uh, deciding who is allowed to interact with the bots, but for now, this is what I'm gonna let it be, just reply channel SMS. So I've got my two triggers. Before you build anything else, you do want to save because it won't um, it won't allow you to. If you're building this for the first time, it'll kind of gray out these triggers until they're saved, especially when the if else is happening there. The other thing I want to do foundationally is come into settings and I want to allow multiple, right? Because we're having conversations back and forth. So this is one where we do want to have it allow multiple. So at this point, for your side, you've got two triggers: contact change and customer replied, and uh, and we've got allow multiple on. At this point, I wasn't sure how to best demonstrate the workflow. I ultimately ended up deleting it all and rebuilding from scratch. So I'm gonna skip ahead to that part. Hopefully that you know saves you some time. By the way, if you're enjoying this, I would love it if you like and subscribe to the video. It really helps to get the word out about helpful things like this and learning how to do cool things inside of high level. But with that said, let's skip to the part where I delete it all and then rebuild it in front of you. So I've showed you what this looks like ultimately. I'm going to, and hopefully find this helpful, I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna rebuild it right in front of you. I promise you it doesn't take a lot of time, but I, I find maybe that's maybe that's a helpful way to see this a full build. We're gonna delete this, and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna delete this up in all of its branches. Oh no, <laughs> it's okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is add the webhook, and I'm gonna go copy and paste that from over here. So we've got our webhook from Zapier. We're using the post action. I'm gonna save that action. There's our webhook. If I wanna retitle this, what is it doing? This is send to Zapier, right? Ultimately, open AI. Now that I've got that, what before, let me clarify, before I go any further, I wanna save and then I wanna test. Run yourself or a contact through this as is, right? The reason why I deleted this and ran this all through there because with the if else pattern of where the trick, you know, which triggers were le leading this in here, it would be really hard to test it because it would always default to, to the no path. And so that wouldn't, um, it wouldn't send it to Zapier and I do wanna get a test over in there. So if you're building it from scratch, which I'm assuming you are, cause you're watching this, step one, add the webhook in there, save it, and then run the test right here. You just select a contact, it could be yourself. It really doesn't matter because nothing's happening here. But if you wanna run a full test, you could you know, uh, run it from yourself. The other thing you could do is you could text whatever number you've got attached to this location. Um, that, might, that might actually work better from a, uh, um, getting a message in there. So even as I'm saying this, I'm rethinking through how I, want it, how I would wanna do this, um, but it's okay. We're, we're building from scratch and this is a, a build map. So we've got, so I've got that in there in terms of uh, what's happening. Now I'm gonna put in our uh, if else. So I'm gonna rebuild that if else. So we're gonna say they replied. That's our first path. It's the trigger is contact replied. I'm gonna add a branch and I'm gonna say, uh, you know, response changed. Select that trigger, is the contact changed? Um, what trigger did they come from? Starting to look familiar, right? We got what trigger did they come from? If they replied, we're sending that response 
to Zapier. If their response changed, which we'll talk about how, how that happens, um, I will, maybe I'll build, build this out right now. It's gonna be a send SMS, and then we're gonna choose custom value, and the only thing we're gonna send is that response. That's it, it's just that custom field for the response. So we could send response. And that's as simple as it gets from a, from a workflow perspective. All right, it looked fancy to start, pretty straightforward um, in terms of, of what's happening and how it all works. But so this is what we've got from, uh, from the workflow perspective. Two triggers, settings for allow, allow a multiple, and then it's gonna filter and say, well, if they replied, send that response to Zapier, and then if, if their uh, response changed, send, it, send a text message with a response. And we're gonna go to Zapier and show you how we actually you know, power this up. And so, when you run it through the first time, you're gonna want that, um, that test to go through. You don't have to build this with a test, but it does make it easier if you've got like a test contact in there for, for the fields. Um, but the next step is gonna be this action for OpenAI. It's actually in beta, but it's already in Zapier. It's already released in there. And the event is we're gonna do send prompt. So send prompt is the event. I meant to, I'll show you this. So in when connecting the account to OpenAI, you're gonna now need to go to OpenAI. If you have an account, you go to the top right for your profile and you can see this view API keys. You're gonna view these API keys and you can see you know, we started using them in August and, and then I reissued a new one for honestly like this little test out in uh, December 26th there. So that's the, um, you know, what, what, where you need to go to get that API key. You can connect that in to the open API, open AI connection inside of Zapier. And now it gives you kind of like, what do you want to run up in terms of the, the model here? So I'm using the DaVinci 3. They've got a range of, you know, if you want faster, lower cost options, but like this is the, this is the, in, this is their most intelligent model that's available here. And then my prompt was create a response for, and, and there it was, right? So you could, I could just have the entire, um, the entire message, but I preferred to actually like prompt is like create a response. So like, I want them to respond to whatever it is coming in. My original thought here was like, what if, as the example I started with, what if they're just saying, hey, or what if they're just saying like, can I you know, come in for an appointment or whatever it might be? So I wanted to test this out with there. I didn't honestly t change much else in terms of the out of the box features in terms of this is sort of like, you know, how much risk do I want the model to take? How many uh, tokens am I allowing it to use to, to generate this response over here? Their token math is interesting. They kind of say t uh, one token is about four characters. Literally, like if you, so if you have, if you have a, whatever, uh, you know, mat, M-A-T-T, -T, that would be one token being used. And they do the rough math to say that it costs you roughly, you know, it's roughly uh, one token is 0.75 words. Um, I think when I did the math on this, it was about 20 bucks gets you 1.8 million words. It's kind of how it came out to be with, with the, the chat GPT model or this uh, DaVinci model there. I didn't put any you know, stop sequences, um, didn't change anything in terms of you know, these other uh, settings. This is just out of the box, and, um, but you can play around with that, and, uh, but, but I, I did not. I let it go right out of the box. And then the last piece here is I use our HL Pro Tools app. So here's all I'll say. If you want to build something that is using, that could be applied to multiple accounts, this is how we build these kind of like apps, add-on apps that could work for all of our sub accounts, all of our locations. That's why the HL Pro Tools app exists because it allows you to do things kind of globally or across your entire high level account. And so the event that I'm running is update contact the, um, you know, you're connecting that location. And then here's where it's kind of like the global option is I'm dynamically selecting the location ID. I'm dynamically selecting the contact ID. So I know where, which location they're in. I know who I'm talking with. And then high level does require you to pass through that phone number as well. And then down here for custom fields, I type in, so this is just normal language. I'm gonna type in response, that custom field that I built. And then I'm selecting here the return that I got from OpenAI. I don't know if you can see this if it's too far down below my screen, but that's that's what's happening is this is this is a populated field from that step two. If you're brand new to Zapier, this concept might be a little bit new, but you can you can actually 
select. So if I'm like selecting one of these fields, I can choose to pull in information from the webhook that I caught or from any previous step, right? So this could be, you know, and this is all of the options inside of OpenAI there. So I had the choices, text, hey there for my test of hey, and then, you know, hey there back. That's what's happening. And so, but this is as simple as it gets. I'm going to pull the, the location, the contact ID, the phone number, and then I'm going to populate back the response text. So what's happening every time this comes through, I send a text message, it sends that to Zapier, Zapier sends it to OpenAI, they generate a response, and then that response gets updated back to the same contact under that response field. And so then what happens? That means the response field was changed every single time. And then it comes down and says, well, which field did it go, you know, which trigger brought it in? Oh, it was the response field. Comes the response field, and what's it do? It sends the message, and the message is just whatever that response field is. So in this way, we're able to use high level as the mouthpiece, right? High level's managing that conversation back and forth, and open AI is the brain determining how to, how to respond, how to actually interact, how to have a conversation with, um, with the contact. So that is, that is how we built an open AI or a chat GBT chat bot with high level. And like I said, you saw me, even if you were building along with me, this should take you less than 30 minutes. Um, and it does not, does not need to break the bank in terms of what we could possibly do. And if you build it in this way, where I've got like one zap, we're not gonna apply this to all of our clients. We haven't fully run that now. We're actually just shifting how, uh, how we used to use dialogue flow for that conversational booking piece. But in that way, it's a very simple setup that allows me to deploy this at scale across all of my accounts if I wanted to. Um, but at the very least, you could put this in your own account, build it out and have a fun way to interact with uh, ChatGPT so you don't have to log in and click all of those images. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see me make more videos like this, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and uh, let me know in the comments if uh, if you run into any issues or have any questions. Um, but you know, per usual, HL Pro Tools, we're here to make high level easy and so happy to support you and help you in any way we can. Thanks.